الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala the topic of today's khutbah will be regarding one of the short surahs from Juz Am the last part of the Quran this is one of the most uh, important parts of the Quran as many of us Muslims memorize that part and we use it a lot in our Salah. It is always important to uh, read the meanings of the verses of this chapter. Of course, it is always praiseworthy to learn the whole Quran and to be a master in it, to be proficient in it. However, this last part of the Quran, as I said, it is the part that we usually, uh, most of us memorize, most of us use in our salah. It is always important to check and recheck, read and read again uh, the meanings of those chapters, seeking the help 
of the books of tafsir in order for us to be reflecting, thinking about what we are reading in our uh, salah, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, this, uh, inshallah ta'ala, is the surah, surah at-teen. Wat-teen wa zaytun wa turi sinin wa hadha al-balad al-ameen. The surah starts with these oaths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath with whatever he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he is the creator of all things. Everything is created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. However, we as the humans, we are only allowed to make an oath by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or any of his attributes, azza wa jal. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath by something, then he is indicating to us the importance of that thing that he is making an oath with. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions wattini wa zaytun. Allah mentions the fig and Allah mentions the olive. Both of these uh, plantations or fruits or vegetables, they are very beneficial to the humans. They carry a lot of nourishing ingredients within them and many people use them and they benefit from them the olive itself is mentioned in another place in the quran the olive tree and it was given as an example as for the light of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the light of guidance that he puts in the hearts of the people the olive oil is mentioned in there in a very beautiful uh, parable and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commanded us to use the olive oil in our food and to use it to oil uh, ourselves. And he said that it is from a blessed tree. فَإِنَّهُ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ As in the Quran, شَجَرَةٍ مُبَارَكَةٍ زَيْتُونَ As it is mentioned in the Quran as a blessed tree, the tree, the olive tree. Now, Having uh, said that, then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ He makes an oath by the secure city. That is Mecca. Mecca subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted that city to be safe and secure. This is his legislation. This is what he wants from the people to do. Although sometimes the people violate that and they end up being under the threat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who wants even intense just intending to commit wrong in that place Mecca is itself a, a sin that one will be uh, accountable for Allah wanted for that place to be safe and secure that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it Al-Balad Al-Ameen. What is the relationship between these oaths? The fig and the olive, uh, the olives, waturi sinin, uh, before Al-Balad Al-Ameen, Allah makes an oath with the turi sinin. The word sinin, it means the meaning of it is blessed or baraka, mubarak. And, uh, it's making an oath here by Mount Sinai. Turi Sinin or Turi Saina, uh, the same place. And then you have Al Balad Al Amin, and that is Mecca. What is the relationship between the oaths that are made in here? Obviously, according to the scholars of Tafsir. Alayhim rahmatullah, that Wattini was Zaytun, this is the land of Asham where these trees grow abundantly, especially Bayt al Maqdis, Jerusalem, where Prophet Isa alayhi as salatu was salam was sent. Waturi Sinin, that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Prophet Musa alayhi as salatu was salam. وهذا البلد الأمين مكة is where Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم was 
sent. This is the relationship between those oaths. It is making an oath by those, uh, uh, by the messages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent there and the prophets that, are, that came there. These are the places where these noble prophets were uh, sent. And this also is mentioned towards the end of the Torah. Ja'allahu min turi Sayna, that Allah came from Mount Sinai, that referring to Allah speaking to Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Wa ashraqa min sa'ir. Allah lighted up from sa'ir. This is the mount where Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, is. Wa sta'lana min jibali faran. And Allah declared himself from the mountains of Faran. Faran in another place in the Bible still mentions that that is the place where Ibrahim والسلام, took his wife Hajar. So we the Muslims, we understand this as an indication to and a prophecy that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is coming. Of course, those who believe in these books from the previous nations, they have different interpretations of that, but this is what we believe there are a number of indications from the previous, previous prophets about the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Now, those three places, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes an oath by them. وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ What is the oath? لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Surely, we have made the human, we have created the human in the best fashion, in the best shape, in the best form. If you compare the human being to the rest of the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the human beings with beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them and honored the humans above uh, compared to the other creation that he has created subhanahu wa ta'ala the human eats with his hand the human walks on his feet while many of the animals they eat with their mouths they walk on four if you just uh, uh, think about that and think about how the shape of the human will be if he were to walk on four or eat with the mouth uh, you will clearly see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the, uh, the humans above the rest, especially the favor of the intellect, the favor of al-aql, the understanding, the comprehension that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed the human beings with over the rest of the uh, animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created. Allah did mention this in the Quran in other places وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Surely we have honored the children of Adam and we made them excel. We gave them excellence over many of those whom we created all the excellence. Allah has favored them in the best uh, way. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after that he says ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ Then we turn this human to the lowest of ranks, the lowest of stages. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an exception at the end of the surah for those who believed and did righteous deeds. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a never-ending a, a never-ending reward, uh, a reward without cessation, a reward that will not stop or end. What is the meaning of ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ According to one group of scholars, they say that after the human is created or in the beginning, the human becomes uh, beautiful, nice, and strong, but then towards the end of his life, reaching an old and senile age, then 
the faculties of this human will drastically deteriorate and the body parts also same thing will happen to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and this is the exception that he makes for the believers if we take this understanding of the ayah then Allah is saying that those humans who accept faith and do righteous deeds even if they grow older even if they become old and senile even if their faculties and their body parts deteriorate still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a reward that will never end a reward that will never end even those actions that they used to do when they are healthy and strong and they continue to want to do it but they are stopped from doing that because of their old age or their body parts doesn't help them to do that still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue his reward for them subhanahu wa ta'ala that is because they believed in him that is because they did righteous deeds that is one of the meanings another meanings that is chosen by another group of scholars is that those humans they are turned to the lowest of the low that is the lowest of the low of ranks in the hellfire that is for those who disbelieved in Allah chose disbelief and they did not do righteous deeds as for the believers who believed in Allah and did righteous deeds then they have an exception that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them a reward that will never cease a reward that will never stop and that is the reward that they will get in uh, paradise enjoying all the kinds of uh, enjoyments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined uh, for them then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ بِالدِّينَ what is it then that makes you deny accountability deny the day of judgment O oh, human what is it that makes you deny the day of judgment deny accountability deny the fact that you will stand one day in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be held accountable for all of the deeds that you have done in this world then the next ayah says alayhi sallahu bi ahkam al hakimin isn't allah isn't allah ahkam the best al hakimin al hakimin here from al ihkam wal itqan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected everything that he uh, created everything that he does is perfect and also it is from hikmah everything that he does is based upon his wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala and his wisdom necessitated that he created the humans and to have them be on earth and to test them subhanahu wa ta'ala to offer them to call them to al-iman and to call them to the house of peace wallahu yad'u ila dar salam allah calls to the house of peace وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ the call is open to all to believe and get into the house of peace however Allah mentions that he guides whomever he wishes to the straight path Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his knowledge and wisdom he knows who is worthy and who is unworthy who is who is the one who deserves to be guided and who is the one who does not deserve the guidance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he called the humans to believe and to enter the house of peace he set up for them and he informed them of the causes that will lead them to be guided and he showed them the, the causes that will lead them to be misguided and therefore the way 
leading to paradise is crystal clear. The way leading to the fire is also crystal clear. However, the disbelievers, they choose to, to deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore deny the, res the, the resurrection, therefore deny the accountability. And there are those amongst them who say that Allah created the universe because this is so obvious, they cannot deny that. They cannot deny that. Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun Were they creating, created by nothing? Or are they themselves the creators? So many people do not deny the creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they do not want to worship him. And they claim that he does not command them to do things. He does not forbid them from doing things. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that they would think that they were created suda, in vain. Not to be commanded and not to be prohibited from doing things. Many people live their lives like that. Yes, there is a creator, but there is no connection. There is no connection between the creator and the created. Therefore, they do not believe in a revelation. Therefore, they do not believe in messengers that Allah sent and messengers that Allah revealed books to them. And this will lead them in the end to deny the day of judgment and to deny accountability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in these verses uh, after mentioning that Allah created the human subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who created the human the first time he is all able subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring him back again and according to human standards according to human standards if you are able to do something there is nothing preventing you from redoing it again this is common sense for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all is easy subhanahu wa ta'ala but this is an intellectual type of proof that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator which most of the humans with sound minds they would agree then what is it that will stop you from believing that Allah will resurrect will bring those back to life again those humans back to life again and then holding them accountable for what they have done especially that he is the most just there is no oppression in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is it that is preventing you why is it that you are denying the fact that you will be resurrected isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most just of judges أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Dear brothers and sisters We benefit from this surah in the Quran the nobility of those three places that were mentioned. And that is Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, and uh, Mount Sinai, Tur Sinai, and also Mecca, Al Balad Al Amin. And this nobility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave this nobility to these places. And we are not allowed to invent, to invent or innovate or make up nobilities or certain qualities for these places other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, to us. For instance, the place that is in uh, that area in Sinai that is called Masjid Musa, 
and the people would make a trip to it and pray in there. There is no special quality to that masjid. The three masjids that have this special quality uh, are known in Islam. They are Mecca, Bayt al-Haram, and also al-Masjid al-Nabawi, and also Bayt al-Maqdis. We are not allowed even knowing, as some scholars, they mention that the whole sham, and this is also found in the hadith, the whole sham is the bless blessed place. All of sham is blessed, not only uh, Jerusalem, but Jerusalem is a, a special for al-Masjid al-Aqsa, but all of the sham is uh, actually blessed, and therefore we cannot just select places or a masajid, make up a masjid in a certain place, then it has a certain quality. Muslims do not do that. They do not invent or innovate in their uh, religion. Uh, it is well known in Islam, the place of uh, Al-Masjid Al-Haram and Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi. I should highlight the Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and what is mentioned about it. Of course, as all you, you all know, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is the first Qibla that the Muslims directed themselves to when Rasulullah migrated to al Madina. Up until later on, the uh, Qibla was changed to Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Uh, Bayt Al-Maqdis is the place where the Prophet وسلم, was taken in a night journey, Al-Isra, alayhi salatu wassalam. And from there, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, he took that Mi'raj when he rose up to uh, the heavens. And this is the heritage of the Muslim Ummah. Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is the heritage of the Muslim Ummah and it is their duty to uh, keep it as a Muslim uh, place. In Sahih Al-Targhib wa Al-Targhib from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiyallahu anh, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لما فرغ داود من بناء بيت المقدس سأل الله عز وجل ثلاثا When Dawood عليه الصلاة والسلام finished building that is rebuilding بيت المقدس Jerusalem he uh, المسجد الأقصى he asked Allah عز وجل for three things أن يؤتيه حكما يصادف حكمه that Allah will give him a ruling that matches his whenever he judges that judgment is matching what Allah wants agrees with it وَمُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ A dominion or a kingdom that should not be given or fitting for anyone after him. And he asked Allah for the third thing. وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَأْتِي هَذَا الْمَسْجِدَ أَحَدٌ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا الصَّلَاةَ فِيهِ إِلَّا خَرَجَ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ كَيَوْمَ أو كَيَوْمَ أو كَيَوْمِ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمَّهِ That no one would come to the masjid not intending except to pray in it, except that he will come out of his sins like the day when his mother gave birth to him, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما اثنتين فقد أعطيهما وأرجو أن يكون أعطي الثالثة As for two, he definitely was granted them, the first two, and I hope that he would, be, he would have been given the third one, that no one goes there intending nothing but to pray in al-Masjid al-Aqsa, except that he will come out from his sins as the day when his mother gave birth to him. Another hadith in Sahih Al-Targhib wa Al-Targhib from uh, narrated by Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu who asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the reward of praying in Jerusalem, Al-Bayt Al-Maqdis. He said, Salatun fi masjidi hadha afdalu min arba'i salawatin fih wa la ni'mal musalla hu. That praying in my masjid, that is the prophetic masjid, Masjid al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is better than praying, uh, uh, is four times better than praying there. We know that the praying in Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ is better than 1,000 Salah elsewhere except Al-Masjid Al-Haram. So in this way, uh, the prayer in Baytul Maqdis is 250, better than praying elsewhere except the Masjid in Mecca and the Masjid in al Madina. These are some of the narrations or some of the excellences uh, that are pertaining to uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it safe and to make it uh, Islamic uh, always. Uh, from the benefits that we get from the surah also, the fact that Allah 
has honored and favored the son of Adam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise those from the believers who believe and do righteous deeds even if they grow and become old and senile Allah will still continue the reward for them according to the first meaning according to the second meaning then the danger the danger of refusing Allah's message that those who do that Allah will turn them back to the lowest of the lowest of the ranks of the fire والعياذ بالله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes those who choose disbelief over believing uh, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, we benefit from the surah that the fact that there is no proof there is no excuse for those who deny the coming of the day of judgment and we also benefit from the surah the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all perfect in what he does the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wisest of the wise I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit all of us from what we heard to make us from a people who listen to a statement and follow the best of it Allahumma a'inna wa la tu'in alayna wansurna wa la tansur alayna umkur lana wa la tamkur alayna wahdina wa yassiri al-huda ilayna wansurna ala man baga alayna Allahumma ja'alna laka shakkareen laka dhakkareen laka rahabeen laka mitwaaeen ilayka awahina munibeen Rabbana taqabbal tawbatana waghsil hawbatana واجب دعوتنا وثبت حجتنا واهد قلوبنا وسدد ألسنتنا واسلل سخيمة صدورنا اللهم اهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق والأعمال لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عنا سيء الأخلاق والأعمال لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت اللهم احفظنا بالإسلام قائمين واحفظنا بالإسلام قاعدين واحفظنا بالإسلام راقدين ولا تشمت بنا أعداء حاسدين اللهم إنا نسألك من كل خير خزائنه بيدك ونعوذ بك من كل شر خزائنه بيدك نسألك اللهم من خير ما سألك عبدك ونبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما عاذ به بك منه عبدك ونبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم نجي المستضعفين من المؤمنين اللهم أدخلهم مدخل صدق وأخرجهم مخرج صدق واجعل لهم من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم عليك بعدوك وعدوه اللهم أحصهم عددا واقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم أحدا واجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم واجعل دائرة السوء تدور عليهم ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة